Our biological ancestors accumulated culture through a few million years. We're never unequipped for the task at hand. We naturally look around for something to fashion into a tool. We create a tool for every need, and each newly invented tool means that our way of life changes a little. Our first tools were sticks and stones, as they are for many species. Later on, we modified rocks to cut, poke, and scrape. The knowledge and use of each newly invented tool quickly spreads around the planet to everyone else experiencing the need for that solution. Since the time of the first humans, all of the humans of the earth have been combining knowledge. Today's science and technology is the combined sum of all the facts, tools, and procedures ever discovered or invented by anyone throughout the planet. Your everyday life is filled with things you have inherited from the many peoples of the earth, as explained in Ralph Letton's essay about the diffusion of inventions that I will now recite. He describes the origins of many elements of daily life for a man who lives in the United States. Our solid American citizen awakens in a bed built on a pattern that originated in the Near East but was modified in Northern Europe before it was transmitted to America. He throws back covers made from cotton, domesticated in India, or linen, domesticated in the Near East, or wool from sheep, also domesticated in the Near East or silk, the use of which was discovered in China. All of these materials have been spun and woven by a process invented in the Near East. He slips into his moccasins, invented by the Indians of the eastern woodlands, and goes into the bathroom, whose fixtures are a mixture of European and American Indian inventions, both of recent date. He takes off his pajamas, a garment invented in India, and washes with soap invented by the ancient Gauls. He then shaves, a masochistic rite that seems to have been derived from either summer or ancient Egypt. Returning to the bedroom, he removes his clothes from a chair of southern European type and proceeds to dress. He puts on garments whose form originally derived from the skin clothing of the nomads of the Asiatic steppes puts on shoes from skins tanned by a process invented in ancient Egypt and cut to a pattern derived from the classical civilizations of the Mediterranean, and ties around his neck a strip of brightly colored cloth that is a vestigial survival of the shoulder shawls worn by 17th century Croatians. Before going out for breakfast, he glances through the window, made of glass invented in Egypt, and if it is raining, puts on overshoes made of rubber discovered by the Central American Indians and takes an umbrella invented in southeastern Asia. Upon his head, he puts a hat made of felt, a material invented in the Asiatic steppes. On his way to breakfast, he stops to buy a paper, paying for it with coins, an ancient Lydian invention. At the restaurant, a whole new series of borrowed elements confronts him. His plate is made of a form of pottery invented in China. His knife is of steel, an alloy first made in southern India. His fork, a medieval Italian invention, and his spoon, a derivative of a Roman original. He begins breakfast with an orange from the Mediterranean, a cantaloupe from Persia, or perhaps a piece of African watermelon. With this he has coffee an Abyssinian plant with cream and sugar. Both the domestication of cows and the idea of milking them originated in the Near East, while sugar was first made in India. After his fruit and coffee, he goes on to waffles, which are cakes made by a Scandinavian technique from wheat domesticated in Asia Minor. Over these he pours maple syrup, invented by the Indians of the eastern woodlands. As a side dish, he may have the egg of a species of bird domesticated in Indochina, or thin strips of the flesh of an animal domesticated in Eastern Asia that have been salted and smoked by a process developed in Northern Europe. When our friend has finished eating, he settles back to smoke, an American Indian habit consuming a plant domesticated in Brazil in either a pipe derived from the Indians of Virginia or a cigarette derived from Mexico. 
If he is hardy enough, he may even attempt a cigar transmitted to us from the Antilles by way of Spain. While smoking, he reads the news of the day, imprinted in characters invented by the ancient Semites upon a material invented in China by a process invented in Germany. As he absorbs the accounts of foreign troubles, he will, if he is a good conservative citizen, thank a Hebrew deity in an Indo-European language that he is 100% American. We are all in this together. We all contribute to the progress of our civilization. Which future tool will be next to significantly alter our lives? Will it be genetic engineering, fusion power, quark-based machinery, the colonization of other planets, or something as unimaginable as were electronic computers 150 years ago when Maxwell first finalized the equations describing electricity?